to listen to these words. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem is built like the city that is closely compacted together. That's where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. So let's extend our hands towards this place and let's say what the psalmist says. Peace be within you. Let's say that together. Peace be within you. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem once more. Peace be within you. probably going to mention some of the, the historical sites. Let me go back to because we're sitting right in the place where these things took place. Uh, I was in the book of Acts, very familiar passage of scripture and I, I just want to highlight that for you for just a moment. You're, you are sitting you are sitting right where these events happen. Acts chapter 1 and we'll start at verse 4. <coughs> On one occasion, while he was eating with them, talking about Yeshua, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. Now this is 40 days after his resurrection. What is the next feast that comes after the Feast of First Fruits? We have Passover, Unleavened Bread, and then Resurrection Day is the Feast of First Fruits, right? Okay, which is now, okay, Easter. <laughs> the Feast of First Fruits, according to the scriptures. What's the very next feast that happens? Shavuot. Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. And how many days is it after Passover? It's 50 days. That's where we get Pentecost from, Penta in the Greek, 50. And so this is now 40 days. Yeshua's been raised from the dead. He's been seen all throughout the land. He's appeared to one, to three, to 12, to hundreds at a time. And he's, he's right here on this mountain looking at where, well, without that. And, um, Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and he says these words. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a very few days. So nine point something days from the time these words were spoken, the counting the Omer is finished, Shavuot comes, the outpouring, it's on the very next page. So when they met together, where did they meet together? Right here. Right here. They haven't got to the upper room yet. That's on page. Whatever. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Say restore. 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 The Hebrew word is tikkun. 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 It means restoration. To restore is this. To return something, listen, to return something to its original place, purpose, or owner. And also, if you flip the coin over, it's to return someone to their original place, purpose, or owner. The Apostle Paul said, my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. He has been, since this day, on this mountain right here, the plan of God has been to restore this place to himself, these people to himself, and us to our original purpose, plan, and possessor. He's about <coughs> that, and the more we yield to that, the more quickly we're going to 
Laodicea. Will you at this time restore all things, the kingdom to Israel? The promises of God have not been replaced or displaced by another people or another branch. When you come into the kingdom, you become a part of this whole plan of God. One new man in Messiah, Amen. Jew and Gentile yes. together. It's always been that way. It will always be that yes. way. It's not about Jewish or Gentile. It's about the God yes. of Israel. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we are standing in that place. Right here, it says, right in front of them. After this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them, hid him from their sight. They looked intently, you, you know the rest. Then we go to Acts chapter 3. Peter's preaching in the temple, right there on that platform. And he says he must remain in heaven until the time to restore all things. I personally believe we are in the season of the time of the restoration of all things. 1948, Israel out of the, the ashes of the Holocaust, 1967, this city reunited again. 2004, the Sanhedrin reestablished. They're now up in the Galilee where we just were. He's restoring all things. I spent hours with an Orthodox Jewish man the other night at dinner. It was an incredible experience. He's breaking down the walls. He's restoring fellowship. He's revealing the one new man. What's next? <laughs> but not from there. <laughs> yeah. All of those graves will open. The double gates will be unblocked. Messiah will come and ride into the city. And it's all over but singing. These are the days of the yes. All right. Amen. And you are sitting right where these are. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Give them a Don't you love Tisha? Yeah. Yeah.